Zodiac took credit for several murders in the San Francisco Bay Area in the late 1960s, but he was never caught. Hello everyone and welcome to All Time Chatter Podcast. I'm your host and today we will be learning about the Zodiac Killer and the cases which have took place in the 1960s. Who was the Zodiac Killer and what actually happened in the era of 1968-69 and the rest of the years? The self-proclaimed Zodiac Killer was directly linked to at least five murders in Northern California in 1968 and 69 and many have been responsible for more. He taunted the police and made threats through letters sent to area newspapers from 69 to 1974 before abruptly ceasing communication. Despite intensive investigation, no one was ever arrested for the crimes and the case remains open till now. The mystery surrounding the murders has been the subject of numerous books and movies including director David Fincher's acclaimed 2007 feature The Zodiac. On August 1, 1969, the San Francisco Examiner, the Chronicle and Valojo Times Herald each received an identical handwritten letter in an envelope without a return address. Beginning, Dear Editor, I am the killer of the two teenagers last Christmas at Lake Herman. The letters contain details from the Zodiac Killer's mothers that only the killer could have known. The killer went on to threaten further attacks if the letters weren't printed on the front page of the papers. Each letter closed with a symbol consisting of a circle with a cross through it in what could come to be known as the Zodiac Killer symbol. The letters were also each accompanied by one part of a three-part cipher that he claimed contained his identity. While Bay Area Police Departments, with the support of the FBI, worked feverishly to track down the killer, another letter soon arrived at the San Francisco Examiner. Beginning Dear Editor, this is the Zodiac speaking. It has also described the mothers in detail and taunted police for not having been able to crack his code or catch him. Several days later, high school teacher Donald Harton and his wife, Betty, were able to solve the cipher. I like killing people because it is so much fun at red. It is more fun than killing wild games in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. Three days after the fourth known Zodiac killing, the 1969 murder of the taxi driver, Paul Stein, the San Francisco Chronicle received a letter claiming the crime. Written in the same erratic print as the Zodiac's previous letter, it gave the details of Stein's murder and was accompanied by a bloody scrap of Stein's shirt. At the end of the letter, the killer mused that he would next shoot out the tire of a school bus and pick off the kitties as they come bouncing out. The Zodiac killer continued his taunting correspondence with Bay Area papers in which he included more ciphers, claimed to have committed several more murders and mocked the police for the inability to catch him. In 1974, the letters suddenly stopped and although the investigation has not, the Zodiac killer was becoming very famous in the Bay Area. People stopped sending, basically parents stopped sending their kids to school and many people stopped going to the daily work. At present, four separate attacks have been definitely attributed to the Zodiac Killer. The first confirmed incident took place on the night of December 20, 1968, when 17-year-old David and his 16-year-old girlfriend Betty were shot to death near their car at a remote spot on Lake Herman Road on the outskirts of Valley Joe, California. Police were baffled, unable to determine the motive for the crime or a suspect. Early in the morning of July 5, 1969, Darlene Ferrin, age 22, and her boyfriend Mike, age 19, were sitting in a parked car in a similarly remote Valojo location when they were approached by a man with a flashlight. The figure fired multiple shots at them, killing Ferrin and seriously wounding Maggie. 
Within an hour of the incident, a man called the Valajo Police Department, giving them the location of the crime scene and claiming responsibility for both the attack and the 1968 murder of Faraday and Jensen. Despite evidence that included fingerprints, Maggie's description, the decoded cipher, and a wave of tips and leads, police were unable to track down the Zodiac Killer. On the evening of September 27, 1969, he struck again, approaching young couples Cecilia Shefford and Brian Hartnell as they relaxed an isolated part of the shore of Lake Beresia in Nepal country. Wearing a hood and a shirt bearing a circle cross symbol, he tied them up before brutally stabbing them. Scrawling a message for police on their car door and leaving the scene, he then called the Nepa Police Department to claim responsibility. Shefford and Hartnell were both in critical condition but alive when emergency services arrived. But Shefford died of a wound shortly thereafter. Two weeks later, on October 11, 1969, the Zodiac claimed another life, shooting 29-year-old taxi driver Paul Stein in San Francisco, Presidio Heights neighborhood. As the murder did not seem to fit the Zodiac's pattern, it was initially deemed a robbery until the San Francisco Chronicle received a letter claiming the crime. At least five other murders have been tentatively linked to the Zodiac Killer, including the 1963 shooting of Robert Dominguez and Linda Edwards near Santa Barbara, California, and the 1966 stabbing death of college student Cherry Jo Bates in Riverside, California. With description from witnesses who had seen a man leaving the scene of Paul Stein's 1969 murder, police were able to create and circulate a composite sketch of the killer. But despite mounting evidence and the investigation of numerous suspects, the Zodiac remained at large. Was the Zodiac killer ever caught will be the question of most of the listeners, but in real, it has not. In both the known and presumed Zodiac murder, no suspect has ever been arrested. In the nearly five decades since the Faraday Jensen murder, the inability to identify the Zodiac killer has continued to frustrate law enforcement. There has been numerous Zodiac theories and suspects. There have been numerous true crime authors and former San Francisco Chronicle cartoonist Robert Graysmith who wrote two separate works on the killer, 1986 and Zodiac and 2002 Zodiac Unmasked. There have been a lot of movies consisting this area. So according to the latest case update, in 2020, after more than 50 years, a mature code breakers solved the Zodiac killer cipher. The decoded message read, I hope you are having lots of fun in trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show which brings up a point about me. I'm not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise. All the sooner because I now have enough slaves to work for me where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise so they are afraid of death and I am not afraid because I know that my new life is life will be an easy one in paradise death. Okay, so this was the end of the Zodiac Killer's deep dive into this case. I hope you liked it. This was a 9 minute recording. It has not been pretty long, but it has also not been pretty short. I think so I've like described it in a very summarized way from the killing to the timeline to the updated case. I hope you liked it and if you want me to do more case, I'll be coming soon with new episode thank you so much for listening make sure to check all of my resources will be down below down below make sure to check all time chatter podcast and thank you so much for listening i'll meet you next time bye